Hi, hello and welcome to our channel Engineers Revolution. Hope you all are good and safe. Okay, then the session for today is I'm going to explain the solution for the problem asked on July 24th. Let me now give a quick overview of the problem. You will need to create a class food item and also define a constructor for it. Within the same class, you will need to create a method named uh, provide discount. You will also need to create a class named restaurant and also define a constructor for it. Within the same class named restaurant, define a method named retrieve updated price, which will call in the method named uh, provide discount defined in the class food item. Finally, you will need to create the main function for the problem. Hope you all got the quick overview of the problem statement. Do not worry if you do not know about constructors and also about the functions. I will help you with all those steps. Okay, then let us get into our problem statement one by one. Have a quick 10 second glance on the first part of the problem statement. The same statement was being given in the exam too. Firstly, you will need to create a class named food item. For this, the syntax is class followed by the class name. Easy than Java, right? Now, uh, let's create the init method, which is nothing but the constructor of the class food item. To speak about the constructor, those are the functions which will be called when the class name is being created or called in the main functions. You will not need to call them separately. We have taken all the parameters given the problem statement in the order they have mentioned. I haven't changed any variable name. I used only those given in the problem statement. After taking in all the parameters, I need to assign them to the constructor variable which would start with a self followed by a dot and a name. I have used the same parameter name in order to avoid confusion. It is also a good practice to provide the same name. Hope you can understand now how to create a class and also define a constructor. Okay, then now have a Another 10 second glance at the second part of the problem state. Here we have created a method named provide discount. In order to define a method, use the keyword def diff followed by the method name and within the bracket mention self it is mandatory to mention the keyword self inside the bracket if you need to pass any other parameters to the function you need to mention them in the brackets the task given to us is to find the updated price of the item after discount the formula to calculate this is to subtract amount into discount percentage divided by 100 from the actual account actual amount sorry that's what I have done here in order to access the item price variable place the keyword self before them use the keyword return to return the updated price of the item okay then now have another 10 second glance on the third part of the problem statement As I said before, I have followed the same procedure to create the class restaurant and also to define the init method, which is the constructor. Mm. Now have another 10 second glance on the fourth part of the problem statement now. I have summed up the question being asked shortly in the previous slide. 
I'm not sure about the terms, but the meaning they give are same as they asked in the OPA. Okay, then I have created the method named retrieve updated price and passed two arguments. One is item ID and another is percentage. Firstly, I'm checking whether the given percentage is greater than zero. If so, I check whether the given item ID is present in the food item list. In order to iterate to the food item list, I use a for loop here. And to check if the given item ID is present in the list, I use the if condition. If the given item ID is present in the list, the flag is set to one and the provide discount method is defined in the class food item is being called and the percentage is passed as a parameter to it. Now the provide discount method starts to work and calculates and returns the updated price to the retrieve updated price function. And the returned value is stored in the variable price. Using the print statement, we have printed the item name and updated price. You can also access the arguments of any objects by the object name followed by the dot operator and then followed by the argument name. Okay. <clears throat> If the percentage is not greater than zero, again, I'm going to check if the given item ID is present in the list and without calling the provide discount function, I'm going to just print only the item name and the item price. This else is more or less similar to the one we have defined in the if condition. Now we can see the variable flag is set to one for each and every time the item ID is being present in the food item list. If the flag is zero, it means the given item ID is not being present in the food item list. So I use a print statement to print the statement. I hope we have done almost our problem still only the main function remains untold now let me explain the main function i have used the variable count to specify the number of item details i'm going to get or fetch from the user i have used a for loop for as many times the value count I get the item ID, name, category and price for each item and create an object by calling the class named food item. For each and every time the class name is being called, the init method starts to work and create an object. Those objects which are being created are stored in the food item list. Then I get the item ID and also the percentage of discount from the user. Now I call the class restaurant and pass the parameters restaurant name and also the food item list which has been created. After the class restaurant is being called, the init function starts to work and the object which object being created is stored in the variable R. Then I call the retrieve updated price method defined under the class restaurant using a dot operator for after the object name R and also pass in the parameters item ID and also the percentage. Now let us run our code. We can see that 
our code works fine that's all for today's video if you have any doubts do mention in the comment box if you loved this video give a thumbs up if you want videos further like this do mention which python code i want to explain in the comment box meet you soon in the next video until then it's bye from our team